Hi everyone, welcome to your next Flipped Classroom video. So for this one, I'd like to remind you at the start that there is a PowerPoint with a little summary of some of the stuff that we talk over. You need to make sure that you have uh, had a look at that as well before the lesson. Um, you can watch this video more than once as well because I do appreciate that this is a little bit of a trickier topic. So to begin with, what is the mole? The mole is the measure of the amount of substance. Now, for the amount of substance, we're looking at literally quantifying how many of something we have. I want you to think of the comparison between 100 grams of sugar and 100 grams of rice. They're each made up of grains. Now, the grains of sugar are much, much smaller than a grain of rice, for instance. So if I have 100 grams of each, I'm obviously going to have more grains of sugar per 100 grams than I have of grains of rice. The mole is effectively a way of quantifying something along those lines. We need to know how many we have count for count. So we could replace the idea of sugar and we could say, right, hydrogen and compare it to magnesium. If we had 100 grams of each of those, just like the sugar and rice, I would expect to have more atoms of hydrogen in my 100 grams compared to atoms of magnesium. The mole is just a quantifiable measure of that. Now, the actual value of the mole is equal to, in terms of how many atoms or particles this represents, 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23. So this has been written in standard form because otherwise this number would be significantly large and very difficult to write down in a small answer space. And it is the Avogadro constant. So you'll find this on your data sheet. If I have that many of something, I have one mole. So if I have that many hydrogen atoms, I have one mole. If I have that many magnesium atoms, I have one mole. Those two masses would be very different. I would expect the mass of one mole of magnesium to be much, much bigger. It would be just over 24, for instance compared to the hydrogen, but I would have that many of that, which is what's important. If I had that many chairs, I would have one mole of chairs. That's a ridiculously large number of chairs, but still the point is there. I can have one mole of anything if I have that number of it. But we keep it in an atomic sense because it's very easy to have that number of atoms compared to that number of something that is more our size. The next thing we need to look at is how we use these triangles. So we've got three at the moment. There are uh, two more that you need to know, and there is another calculation later in the course, uh, which is based around similar content. But for now, just to introduce you to the course, you just need to be aware of these three. The first one is described by us as the mass triangle because it uses a mass value right at the top here. So the mass value here, this is in grams. This is going to be confusing for those of you who do physics because in physics you work in kilograms a lot, whereas in chemistry you are going to be working in grams most of the time. The N here is the number of moles. So here this is a little shorthand that we use for moles. You can often write N in your working out and the examiner will know what you mean. Molar mass just here You'll notice in your notes this has been written as MR. Now, those aren't the same thing, but they have the same value. The molar mass is the mass of one mole of a substance in units of grams per mole. Now, the MR is the same number, but with a different definition. And we'll go through the definition of MR in the lesson. Now, MR can be calculated very easily. For instance, if I had a molecule of H2O, I would take the relative atomic masses of each of these, so that would be hydrogen 1 plus hydrogen 1 plus oxygen 16, and I would add them together to give me the MR of the substance I was looking at. So, for instance, here it would be 18. Now, the relationship here then is really simple. If I want to know any one number, I have to know the other two. And you literally just cover up the one you want and it shows you what you need to do to get it. So, for instance, if I wanted the molar mass of something, I would take the mass and divide by the moles. If I wanted the mass, I would do the moles times the molar mass, or the MR, we can say. And finally, if I wanted the moles, I would do the mass divided by the molar mass. And to be fair, that's the most common one you do. The most common expression you will do is moles equals mass divided by the MR, or the molar mass. 
The next one just over here on the right hand side, this is referred to by us as the gas triangle. Now, the gas triangle has got this unusual 24 in there. And the reason it has this is because one mole of any gas will occupy 24 decimeters cubed. Now, this is potentially the first time you've looked at decimeters cubed as a quantity, and you need to be aware, especially for the next triangle as well, you need to be aware of how to convert between a centimeter cubed quantity to a decimeter cubed quantity to a meter cubed quantity. You have to know how to convert between all of these. So, for instance, how we convert from centimeters cubed to decimeters cubed is we divide by 1,000, and decimeters cubed to meters cubed, you divide by 1,000 again. From meters cubed back to decimeters cubed, then it is, of course, the reverse. You times by 1,000, and the same way, then, from decimeters cubed back to centimeters cubed, you times by 1,000 again. Sometimes you'll need to convert from centimeters cubed right the way through to meters cubed later in the course. So for that, it seems unusual, but you're going to divide by 1 million. And back the other way, then, of course, you are going to times by a million. So it does seem a little strange at first, but those are your conversions. And again, these are mentioned in the PowerPoint. If you want to print out the slides from that, then you've got something extra. But it will be in the notes as well. Now, one mole of any gas then occupies 24 decimeters cubed. That can be any gas. It can be CO2. It could be helium. It could be nitrogen. One mole of any gas occupies that volume. So what that means is one times that would give us the 24 at the top. So one mole just here. Now, this value at the top here, the real volume, because we don't always have one mole of something, this is still in decimeters cubed. Most of the kit we use in the lab does actually record values in centimeters cubed, so you need to be able to convert to that. Our final one down here, this is referred to as the solution triangle. Not because it solves things, but because we are looking at aqueous solutions for this one. And the big clue for that is it's the only triangle really that has concentration in at this point. Now it's still got moles, but you'll notice moles at this time is at the top of our triangle just here. Moles in the other two has been found by doing one number divided by another, whereas here moles is going to be found by doing the concentration times the volume. Now, once again, which I suppose makes it easier, the volume here, although aqueous, although a solution volume, is actually in decimeters cubed still. Most commonly at this point, you will have to do the centimeter cubed to decimeter cubed conversion. So really often here, you have to do a centimeter cubed to a decimeter cubed conversion, and this is in titrations. So... What is concentration? Concentration is effectively, if you look at the units of concentration, they are moles per decimeter cubed. So what that means is, is if I had a decimeter cubed of our solution, I would find out how many moles are in there by looking at the concentration. It tells me physically how many number of particles I have in that decimeter cubed of the whole solution. We have to assume that the solution is homogenized, and homogenized means everything has been mixed equally throughout the solution. So it's the same reason you would shake orange juice to make sure all the pulp is evenly distributed, otherwise you end up with that big mess of it near the bottom of it. Just to repeat this time, if you want to find out our number of moles, then we need to do these two numbers times together. All your units should be converted before you use any of these triangles. What that means is in the exam, you need to pick through the exam question and look at what kind of data you've been given to know what kind of triangle to use. Read the exam question for a mass, a formula which you could turn into a molar mass, a concentration by seeing this new set of units, volumes that might need converting, or any reference to something being a gas via state symbols in a balanced equation. All your equations need to be balanced for how we are going to use these correctly. Don't forget to look at the PowerPoint, which has a summary of some of this. And if you need to watch the video again, please make sure you do so. I'm not asking you to be an expert with these triangles before you come to the lesson, but I am expecting you to know the units, what they look like, because you will not be given them in the exam. You do have to memorize these and more so that we can make some good progress with some excellent stretch and challenge work in our lesson. Until then, I will see you in class.